Can we bless the Lord? Praise the Lord. Praise Come the on, Lord. let God's people worship the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I know it was a good thing, a bad thing, but a good thing last Sabbath when the light went. It was a, it was a pleasing, you know, to hear the, the, the congregation worship. And every voice is blended together. It was so awesome. Amen. And so we have light today, but we still want to hear the blend of the voices. Amen. Amen. Bless the name of Jesus Christ. God is good. Amen. Amen. And he is worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun until it. Going down. We're not getting a gun on yet in us. So guess what? Worship. Amen. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. Psalm 97. The Lord reigns. Let the earth be glad. Let the distant shores rejoice. Clouds and thick darkness surround him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and consumes his foes on every side. His lightning lights up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his righteousness, and all peoples see his glory. And all people, come on, people of God, and all people, Praise the Lord. hallelujah, all who worship images are put to shame. Those who boast in idols, worship him all you gods. Zion hears and rejoice, and the villages of Judah are glad. Because of your judgments, Lord. For you, Lord, are the most high over all the earth. Hallelujah. You are exalted far above all gods. Let those who love the Lord hate evil. For he guards the lives of his faithful ones. And delivers them from the hand of the wicked. How many of us have been delivered from the hand of the wicked? You know how many times he... He, 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 he wants to put us out, you know, many times he tries to kill us. I can tell you for myself, brethren, many times the enemy tried. That's the name of Jesus. Many times the enemy tries, but it is the Lord that keeps us. Amen? Amen. It is the Lord that protects us daily on the road. Wherever we are, it is he that keeps us. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Rejoice in the Lord then, man. Come on. Rejoice in the Lord, you are righteous. Amen. And praise his holy name. Amen. Blessed be the name of Jesus. So this morning we're going to celebrate. We're going to celebrate. Amen. You, have to, you cannot sit down and celebrate, Virgin. You have to stand up to celebrate. Amen. 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 Bless the name of Jesus. Come on, people of God.
see. We want to see. We want to see Jesus lift their hands. Hey. We want to see. We want to see. We want to see Jesus lift their hands. We want to see Jesus. We want to see Jesus lift their hands. Upon the flies across the sky. Let all men may see the truth. We're going to say to glory. To glory, we want to see Jesus lift high upon it that flies across the sky that all men may see the truth. He's the way to glory, he's the way to glory. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lift high. Say, we want to see, we want to see. Want to see Jesus step by step, step by step we're moving forward, little by little we're taking ground. Every prior a powerful weapon, strongholds come tumbling down and down and down and down and down. Oh, we want to see Jesus. We want to see Jesus lifted. A banner that flies across this land That all men may see the truth and know He is the way to glory We want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high A banner that flies across this land That all men may see the truth and know He is the way to glory Say, we want to see we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. Hey, we want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus. We want to see, say, we want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus. Come on, let's keep it here. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus. We want to see and say, we want to see. We want to see, we want to see Jesus. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted Oh, yes! We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted. Ah. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Step by step, we're, we're moving, moving forward. forward. Little by little we're taking ground Every prior a powerful weapon Strongholds come tumbling down and down and down and down and down Hallelujah! We want to see, we want to see We want to see Jesus lifted high Say, we want to see we want to see, we want to see Jesus. One more time, we want to see. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. Hallelujah. 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 God be lifted up. Hallelujah. Among our problems, Jesus, Jesus be lifted up. Jesus. Above our Hallelujah. marred characters, be lifted Jesus. up. Hallelujah. Above our insignificance, be lifted up. If we have much, be lifted up. If we have nothing, be lifted up. Blessed be the name of Jesus. So we declare that you are high and exalted. Amen. Blessed be the name of Jesus. He is high and exalted and worthy of praise. With the hearts we will love and adore. He is high and exalted and worthy of praise. Holy is the Lord. Come on, friends. 
what we are declaring this morning. Only you are worthy. Only you are wonderful. Only
everyone to stand.
Lord, my love, my heart, my life. Somebody need to hear that. See, all my love, my heart, Jesus, my life. Oh, mighty God, mighty God. All my love, my heart, yes, and my life. All my love, my heart, my life. Oh, yes, Lord. All my love, my heart, my life is a testing of me. Hallelujah. of those who believe that the Lord is holy. <laughs> those who believe that our God is holy. Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. We lift him up at the highest place in worship. Hallelujah. We lift him up because he is indeed holy. Come on, it doesn't matter who we are. It doesn't change the fact that he is. He's holy.
Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. He's holy. He's awesome and he's mighty. Blessed be his name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad he did. Bless the name of the Lord. Let me take time out to welcome one and all to Divine's Worship. Is a place where we worship God with our whole heart. We're not keeping back anything today, but we are going to give him what he truly deserves, and he truly deserves true worship. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Let me ask you to turn your hymnal to M161. Oh, my comrades, see the signal. Waving in the sky, reinforcement now appearing, victory is now. Oh, my comrades, see the signal waving in the sky, reinforcement now appearing. Victory is nigh. Oh, the fort, for I am coming. Jesus signals, Jesus signals still. Let the answer back to heaven. Thy, thy name. See the mighty oaths of fire. Satan leading on. Mighty men around us. Courage almost gone. Trumpet slow. the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. We'll sing the last stanza after with Sister Keisha Brown. We pray to Hope Divine Service. Oh, right. 
Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Oh, come. Let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord God, our maker. We come to you this afternoon in no other name but in the name of Jesus Christ. Sovereign Lord, you are great. When the wise men came to the place where Jesus was, they fell down, they bowed down, and they worship him. This afternoon, we come before you, knowing that you are God, your sovereign, your Lord over all. Yes. We thank you for your grace yes. and for your mercies. Yes. It is nothing good that we have done. Jesus. But you have been tracking us like a drone. Yes. You knew us before we even knew ourselves. Mighty God. And you called us to be a people. Yes. You separated us. Yes. And you called us to be your people. Yes, Lord. Just like you have been tracking the children of Israel, yes. oh God. Yes. So you are our God. Yes, Lord. You are faithful. Yes. You're the one that pardons. Yes. And we thank you yes, for Lord. being so merciful. Yes, we thank you that we can come into your presence time after time to worship you, yes. to give you praise, all the adoration that you deserve. Yes. At this time, we officially invite you yes, into our midst into our presence because this is your place yes. your place that you have set aside mm. that you have sanctified yes. and we come with our offering with our praises with our thanksgiving yes. because we see for a fact that you are worthy yes. you are honorable yes. you are lord over all yes. you are el shaddai yes. you are mighty yes. you are god you say that I am that I am. And at this or whatever needs each of us have, when we come, yes. you are here yes. to supply all our needs yes. according to your riches in glory. Yes. May we know that, oh God, whatever needs we have, that you will supply yes. according to the will that you have for our lives. Yes. I pray that you take full charge of the service. Remember the moderator, the one that stands to lead. Yes. Unctionize him, God. Give him your words that you want him to give to your people. Remember the one who stands to deliver your words. A man, oh God, that you have been preserving yes. to lead your people yes. to be the good shepherd. Yes. I pray that you give him the words, yes. oh God, yes. that you want us to hear. Let it speak to his heart so that he will impart it to us yeah, the man. way that you want him to give it unto us. Remember those who are visiting in our midst, yeah, God. Yeah. They have come. Let them see yeah. that this is your oh, place hallelujah. and that we are not ordinary people. Yeah. And whatever needs they come with today, yeah, that those needs, they will be supplied. Yes. Let them have a wonderful time in your courts, yeah. that they will want to come back and if they have not accepted you, they want to know more about this God yes. that we are speaking about Hallelujah. and that we are worshiping. Yes. We give you praise. We give yes. you honor. Yes. We give you glory. Yes. Bless us individually yes. and corporately. Remember the musicians, the ushers, everyone in our midst, yes. children. Oh God, move through the pews and bless yes. each everyone. Let us Oh God, receive the blessing that you're pouring out today because we need to hear from you. Grant us your blessings as you see fit. Yes. Take ch charge of everything in Jesus' name, I pray and tell you thanks. Amen. 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 Bless the name of the Lord. You may be seated for a while. Let me take this opportunity 
to welcome you all. Those that joined us in cyberspace, we happy to have you worshiping with us today. You know, God is good. His grace and his mercy endure it forever. That's why we are here today. It's nothing good that we have done, but all because of the grace and the extended mercy and love of God. That's why we are here today. We just want to tell him thanks. We just want to thank God for our pastor. Pastor Harley is in our midst today. Put your hands together for him. We're happy to have you, sir. And we appreciate you being here with us. We have some visitors with us, some ladies visiting with us today. The late sister Douglas family over there. I saw them walking. I just remember Sister Douglas. Put your hands together for them. We thank you for being here with us today. I pray that you will give him your all because only your all and your best is good enough. And I know that he will bless you in return. Bless the name of the Lord. We have some of our own members that we have not seen for a while. We have Sister Mikhail Ferguson. Put your hands together for her. And Brother Daniel Johnson. We're happy to have you. We pray that being in our midst today, you will worship the Lord with us and feel free to praise him because he is good to us. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the Lord. Our scripture reading comes to us from the book of Psalm, Psalm 1. Try to just stand everywhere as we read the word of the Lord. Psalm 1. Little children, if you are able to, please stand for the reading of God's holy word. And it read us. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth fruit, its fruit in his season. His leaves also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the trough with the wind drive it away. Therefore the ungodly shall stand the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinner in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to God. Bless the name of the Lord. At this time, let me invite Deacon Walker. He will be conducting the offertory. Can we continue to praise the Lord, church? Can you continue to praise the Lord, church? Come on, are you happy to be in the house of God today, church? Oh, come on. Can we bless the Lord, church? Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Of course, indeed, it's a grand and glorious opportunity to be in the house of the Lord another Sabbath day. You know, of course, we, you know, take, take, take time out to really recognize that the Lord is God and of course it is he who has given us you know the ability to earn whether via job or business or whatever way that we earn and we have you know substance whether it be great or small but we still have substance so it's an opportunity an opportunity time that we have here to give back to the Lord a portion of what he has blessed us with 
And you on cyberspace, we have not forgotten you. We encourage you, of course, also to just recognize that the Lord it is he who has really allowed you to earn. So you ought to give back something to him, some portion of what he has blessed you with. Praise God, church. Praise God, church. Praise God. Of course, just to be supportive with scripture, I just like you to just reflect on Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. That's Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. And it, it goes thus. Honor the Lord with thy substance. And with the first fruit of, the, of all thine increase, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Can we bless the Lord, church? Can we bless the Lord, church? Praise God. You know, this um, proverb here, these words, of course, naturally comes from an agrarian type of setting, where the, the, per, the people would have heard the Solomon to speak these words would have sort of understood what he was saying. But I don't think the meaning is lost on us today. Because we do um, get increases, don't we? In terms of our salary increase and sometimes people give you money and so on. Right? So, you know, what he's saying here is we're blessed to honor the Lord with our substance, with auto. And with the first fruit of our increase, mean that, that increase that you get, you get, <laughs> I mean, $10,000 more. <laughs> I mean, give it to the Lord, no? And he's saying to you that your wine press will never run out. That it's never go dry. Meaning that you always have. That's what he's saying here. And we are people who believe in the word of God. Don't we, church? Don't we, church? Yes, we are people who believe in the word of God. So as we give today, we give our offering. Let's give it with the assurance. I know time's difficult, man, and things are expensive and all that. But let us give to the Lord. And let us see how God works. You know, we say, you know, other pastors say, prove me, prove me. I mean, honestly, I have done it. And God has been faithful. And we've been learning about the faithful God that he is. So as we give today, let's give it the assurance. Let's give it faith. Let's give it confidence that the Lord will honor his promise. Can we just bow your heads as I pray? Well, of course, God's people are prepared to give back to him a portion of what he has blessed them with. Father in heaven, mighty God. Awesome God, we are thanking you to know that years to years you're still the same. You have not changed. You are holy, you are righteous, and you are faithful, God. Faithful in the sense that you keep your promises. And of course, oh Father, we have heard your words today that we shall honor you. And as we are given this another opportunity to put back in the offering basket a portion of what you have blessed us with, help us, oh Father, to do it with faith, to do it cheerfully. Because we know in your words, Jesus, you declared it's more blessed to give than to receive. So we say, Father, receive this offering that we give today. And may it be used for the furtherance of your gospel and your ministry. And may, Father, your kingdom come in our hearts. These mercies we ask in your holy and precious name. Amen. Amen. It's my pleasure to call the women's ministry. We'll be singing while the tithes and offering are being collected. Praise God. One, two. Shall we worship the Lord? Praise the Lord. We serve a God, and this morning, you know, we studied about his forgiveness, and one of the things that came out is how faithful our God is. And the song that we'll be singing for you today is Faithful to the End. When I'm feeling afraid 
full of uncertainty. When the plans that I've made all fall apart, when the future is unclear, and all that I can do is 
Bless the Lord. Put your hands together for the ladies' choir. He knows my name. And despite he knows my name, that I am not good sometimes, he's faithful to the hand. Bless the name of the Lord. He is faithful to the hand. Bless the name of the Lord. He knows me. You know, when the enemy tries to fight me, he knows me, so he defends me. And so, I just want to praise him today. Thank you, ladies, for that wonderful choir, for that wonderful song. I pray that the Lord will continue to be with you and strengthen you as you sing to the honor and glory of God. We are at a very important part of our service where we really hear from God through his servant. And today, God has provided his servant in the persons of our own pastor, Pastor Henry Arley. And so let us just prepare our hearts to hear what the Lord has to say to us through him. I pray that you will pray him up in your heart so that he will speak, thus said the Lord. Put your hands together and welcome Pastor Harley in Jesus' name. Sabbath greetings to all and uh, give God thanks for your presence here so that we can magnify the Lord together. <laughs> Amen. And bless his holy name. Very special welcome to our visitors and we're glad to see uh, representatives of the Douglas family, you know, not only our famous and well-beloved granny Teaser, but, you know, also a daughter and we are thankful to God for just the privilege that we have in spite of the sadness we feel about loss but we also celebrate the hope of reunion in the kingdom of God praise the name of the Lord other visitors we want to recognize you and thank God for you that you're worshiping God it is the best that man can do and we bless the name of the Lord and for those who are joining us online, we are very happy to have you. It really is a privilege, and we give God thanks for the medium we have, that we can share his word with you wherever you are. And we're glad that he has given you the mind to tune in, because he has a word for you. Amen. And what he has to say is always important. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, brethren and friends, happiness is a dream that most people pursue. Amen? And one of the driving forces in uh, our world, and uh, that is represented very well in the United States anyway, is this whole pursuit of happiness. And uh, all of us pursue it, don't we? And uh, for many, it is a fleeting target. We pursue it and never achieve it. Or even if we achieve it, it's momentary. It's just for a short while. Am I right? And so we find that instead of providing us with the happiness we strive for in this life, life deals us more sadness than we really desire. Amen. And so our lives are filled with more times of sadness. 
than of happiness. Amen? So the sad times tend to dominate our lives. And, uh, and so in a large way, our outlook on life is mainly colored by sadness. Amen? Amen? Yeah, so that we go through life more sad than happy. Amen? The times in which we are living and the challenges in particular that we now face have made sadness a major concern and worry associated with sadness even greater concern because we seem not to be sure what direction this world is going in. Amen? And though there may be promises of better and promises of improvement and so on, from time to time we are jerked into the realization that the promises of men don't mean much. Amen? Amen? No matter what they promise and how well intentioned they are, the promises don't amount to much. Amen? Why? Because in many instances, they don't control the outcome. They are not in control of it. Amen? And so what we need to realize that we need to turn our attention to one whose promise is more certain, whose word means more. And I want to recommend that we turn our attention to God. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Because when he makes a promise, hallelujah, praise the name of the Lord, it's a promise he will keep. And so, whereas in our lives, we can easily identify it with the expression, when it's not one thing, it's another. And these words are not usually said when we are happy. <laughs> when we utter these words, when we have to draw for these words, is usually when what? Well, we are sad and there's a problem. And we realize that we have to make it. <laughs> and so what do we say? When it's that one thing is another, but thank God I am going through. Amen? Amen? So tonight, today, I'd like to share with you from God's word. And the topic I'd like to share with you, I hope will stimulate a little expectation of happiness. And here is the, top, the topic, pathway to spiritual prosperity. Amen? Pathway to spiritual prosperity. Now, notice that I did not say pathway to prosperity. <laughs> but pathway to spiritual prosperity. And I'm emphasizing that because I want to avoid association that is usually made in relation to prosperity. Amen? And in Jamaica, <laughs> prosperity is associated a particular kind of way. And that's not what I'm preaching about. <laughs> Amen? So those of you who are excited about that kind of prosperity and have that kind of expectation, that is not what I'm trying to address today. Amen? 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 Amen. But also, I want to not associate what I'm sharing with you with the regular prosperity gospel. Amen? Because that gospel 
generally revolves around an expectation of financial benefit or financial prosperity. And we know from experience, some of which we realize from the little happiness we feel when we get some extra money, that that kind of prosperity don't really work out so well. Because the money takes wings. Amen? And before you know it, we were prosperous with a certain amount of money. And little after that, we are sad. Because the money is gone. Or the prosperity where we measure how well we're doing by how much we have. I am not talking about that either. That is a kind of prosperity that is rooted in materialism. Finance and materialism. And we know that even though those things are useful, that happiness does not rest in them. Amen? For there are many persons who have a lot of money. Money that we wouldn't be able to finish count in our lifetime if we occupy every minute of the day counting. We wouldn't be able to finish counting. And they are not happy. And they are not necessarily prospering. Amen? So prosperity is not to be measured by the quantity of money or wealth that you have. Amen? And or there are persons who have a whole lot of material stuff. Houses and cars and property and what have you. And they are not happy either. They are not prospering. Amen? And so I really don't want you to be thinking of that while I am sharing on this topic today. Amen? So when I'm speaking of pathway to spiritual prosperity, please erase those out of your mind. Amen? Amen? Praise the name of the Lord. So that prosperity or spiritual prosperity, spiritual well-being is not addressed in the way that the world normally seeks to address prosperity. Spiritual prosperity is really addressed on the basis of God's word. For after all, God is spirit. Amen? And they who worship him need to worship him how? In spirit and in truth. And if we are going to do well spiritually, we have to get the spiritual connection. And the spiritual connection we need is founded in his word. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. And so we turn to our text for today. A text that is well known. Almost everybody can recite it. From memory, am I right? What was the text again? Psalm 1. And how does it start out? Blessed, happy, joyful is the man. Or collectively, happy, joyful, blessed are those who do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. And let me pause here to say, that what this is saying is that those who want to prosper spiritually are those who are not following the advice of the ungodly. Amen? The counsel of the ungodly is the advice of the ungodly. Amen? And these days, there is so much advice being given 
about so many things in life that many of us are following. And my question is, is the advice you're following from a godly source? Or is the advice that you're following from the ungodly? And let me hasten to point out that in many respects, a lot of the advice that is on social media is coming from an ungodly source. Amen? Or you could love social media some more. And you could be upset with me because I seem to be opposing social media. Most of the advice, I dare say, on social media is coming from ungodly sources. Amen? Many of the sources are false, flawed, and don't exist. And many of them have no God in them. Amen? So I am not saying there isn't advice there. Nor am I saying there isn't good advice. But what I am saying is that we have to be careful what is the source from which we are taking counsel. Amen? Amen? Because the long and short of it is that we are all taking advice. And the question really is, what advice are you depending on to guide your life? What advice are you depending on? Amen? Amen? And so we know that there is a whole lot of advice out there, but happy, blessed are those who don't listen to or take ungodly advice. Amen? 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 All right. Nor, it says, standeth in the way of sinners. Now, you know, at one stage, there was this view that standing in the way of sinners means that you're obstructing sinners. So the man who do not obstruct sinners is a blessed man. But this standing here is not necessarily talking about obstructing sinners. Standing here in the way of sinners is talking about agreeing with and in support of sinners. Amen? So blessed is the man who is not what? Standing with sinners in agreement with sinners who are not following the ways of sinners, who are not relying on sinners to provide them with how they should live. Come on, our church. Amen? Amen? And let me put a little bit in here that sometimes, you know, we make the comment Unfortunately, I think that our best friends are what? Sinners. That is potentially dangerous because one of the things that best friends do, they influence one another. Amen? Amen? And one of the ways to lose friendship is to disagree. Amen? Amen? And even if you disagree with the truth, sometimes friendships are damaged. Amen? Amen? So the Bible is saying, happy, blessed, joyful is the man who is not living with and taking advice from and in support of sinners. Amen? Are you going to now say, well, all right, you're going to go on like you're better than people? No, 
but you must understand you know god in dealing with his people over the years and through time and in the scriptures show us that he has particular concern about his people amen and he would say to them do not learn the ways amen of ungodly people amen he would say come out of them and be separate touch not the unclean thing why is he saying that because he knows of the potentially corrupting influence of ungodliness amen 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 there is a potentially corrupting influence of ungodliness amen and sometimes you know when we're talking to our own young people we try to tell them that they must avoid bad company why are you telling that because bad company can influence them wrongly amen and so you say the best way to not be influenced is to avoid it and so what we're saying here and what the scripture is saying here is that it is a blessing there is happiness in not consorting with agreeing with and walking hand in hand with sinners amen this is not saying you mustn't try to convert them. This is not saying you mustn't talk to them. Don't get me wrong. This idea is that you're standing in agreement and in support with what they are doing, support of what they are doing and what they are saying. And because it is your friend, then you are afraid to differ or disagree. You with me? Are you with me? Yeah. So it says that there is blessing there. Amen? And it then points out that these are the negatives. So you must avoid them. Am I right? Amen? So avoid walking in the advice of the ungodly or taking counsel from the ungodly. Avoid walking in the way of sinners. Amen? Amen? But what does it say in verse 2? But his delight. But their delight is what? In the law of the Lord. And let's stop there a little bit. Because I think it is important to make a couple comments here. The word used for law here is not our regular understanding of law that we use amen when we talk of law we generally think of what ten commandments so his delight is walking in the ten commandments that's not what this is saying that blessed is the man who walk in the ten commandments delight in the ten commandments it is saying that, but a whole lot more. Amen? So let us not believe that because we are going to be walking or delighting in the Ten Commandments, that that by itself is going to bring us the happiness that the Bible speaks about. The word for law used here is the word Torah. Torah. And Torah in Israel's time was more than just the ten statements or the ten words or the Decalogue. Amen? Torah in Israel's time, and still is for many Jews, refers to the first five books of Moses, otherwise called the Pentateuch. It refers to what has been condensed into 613 commands given to God's people by God himself. Amen? Amen? 
And not only that, the 613 commands were zealously guarded. And there were, according to this record, 365 prohibitions. 365 things you must not do according to the teachings of the Torah. And there were 248 positive commands. So, summarized, the Torah then, or the law of the Lord, was a combination of commands, instructions, directions for God's people given by God himself. Amen? Are you with me? So delighting in the law of the Lord is delighting in the directions from the Lord. Delighting in the law of the Lord is delighting in the instructions from God. Amen? And therefore, what it means here is that we are not just focusing on commandment keeping. We are focusing on what God's directives are. Are you with me? I hope you're understanding what I'm saying. Amen? So when the psalmist says, the blessed or happy man is the one who delights in the law of the Lord, he's saying that man is delighting in what God says. What God's word says. What God's instructions are. What God's directives are. That is the man who is going to be happy. So don't bother feel that because you're a Sabbath observer. You are not killing. You are not stealing. You are not committing adultery. You don't covet. You don't have any other gods and so on. That means that you are delighting yourself in the law of the Lord. Amen. There are countless other instructions that God gave. In fact, in Deuteronomy 31, we find we're having received all of these instructions. They were written in a book and placed in the side of the ark. Amen? So the psalmist is saying there is happiness in delighting in finding joy and pleasure in the instructions of the Lord. Amen? The directions of the Lord. And you know the Bible tells us this all the time. That God's word provides light for our pathway. Amen? The Bible tells us that indeed if we are going to cleanse our ways. We have to take heed to what? The word of God. The Bible tells us that the word of God is indeed if you like, like food. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by taking heed there to according to the word of God. Amen? You look in Psalm 119, and you will see so many things written about the law of God, the word of God, and so on. The Bible says, delighting in that is going to bring happiness. Amen? Amen? Can I pause here and say something? It would appear then that we may be robbing ourselves of some of the happiness we're pursuing by not paying enough attention to the instructions of God and the word of God that we may be going after our own ways we may be seeking our own solutions and trying to deal with life our own way when God has provided what it is that would make us happy. But we are not paying attention to those words at all. And even if we pay attention, 
We're not delighting in it. Now, there's a difference between paying attention to it, hearing it, and what? Delighting it. What does it mean to delight in it? To look forward to engaging, understanding, and applying it. Amen? To be joyful and to feel benefited and to be glad when it comes on to the word of God, the law of God, the directions of God, the instructions of God. Are we that people? Are we that people? But in his law, does he what? Meditate. When? How often? Day and night. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. And it says, meditate. Now, meditate don't mean you hear a good message. And you comment and say, that was a, a good message. Meditate means that you run the thing over and over. You muse on it. You ponder it. You think about it. You try to get deep into it so that you can get as much out of it as you possibly can. Are you with me? So he's saying that the joyful man, the happy man, is a man that not only is aware of the value of the law of the Lord, not only is aware of the instructions that they are in a book called the Bible, but that that person or those individuals are constantly running those things over in their minds. Amen? They're running it over in their minds and they're thinking about it when? Day and night. I am putting it to you, brethren and friends. I'm putting it to your church. I'm putting it to you that this is the pathway to real spiritual prosperity. Do not walk in the advice and counsel of the do not stand in the rather what you should do delight in what the instructions the directions amen the words of God delight yourself in them run them over from time to time in your mind and what, what does verse 3 say and he shall what? Be like a tree planted. Amen. Planted where? By the rivers of water. And what is the essence of that? It is well planted, well supported, well supplied. Praise the name of the Lord. And consequently, it becomes what? Fruitful. Amen? It becomes what? Fruitful. Now, is fruitfulness important in trees? <laughs> what does the Bible tell us about that? You have not chosen me. But I have chosen you and ordained you that what? You should bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. Every branch in me that beareth fruit. What does he do? He prunes it so that what? It bears more fruit. Amen? And if as a tree, you are bearing fruit. You have realized your purpose. Amen? Amen? And if you are going to be happy in life, you are going to have to realize your 
purpose. Amen. Real spiritual happiness resides in a realization of your purpose. Money cannot bring about realization of your material stuff does not do it. Amen? Amen? Why? Because, you see, if you think about it, you realize that the purpose of anything that is made is best known by the one who made it. Amen? And whereas other people can use something for purposes that the thing can serve, they may never ever be able to realize the full potential of that thing until they know why it was made. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. What does the psalmist say? Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves who knows our purpose the best. The one who made us. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. And what does he say? That if you avoid the ungodly and don't listen to the advice and don't stand in the way of sinners. He says, if you delight in his instructions, in his directions, you are going to be like a fruitful tree that has realized its purpose. Praise the name of the Lord. How many of you are interested in your purpose? Amen. Amen. The happiness we pursue, brothers and sisters, the happiness we pursue, friends, reside in being in alignment with the one who created us with. Being in alignment with God and God's will for our lives and his will for our lives is contained in his word. Amen. Whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for what? Our learning. So we need to learn the ways of the Lord. We need to get the instructions that God has for mankind. Amen. And so our fruitfulness, which is about our purpose, it is about our, our own survival. It's about our productivity. It's about our ability to overcome trials and tribulations and still have hope that God who is taking us through has his hand on us and is taking us to a better place. Praise the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. That is what is being said here. That this person is going to be productive. This is going to be a person of purpose. This is going to be a person who has become fruitful. And we could go all over the place with this. But I think you should be getting the point by now. Amen? Amen? That the pathway to spiritual prosperity lies in aligning ourselves with the law of God, the instructions of God, the words of God, the directive. That is how it goes. So until we bring ourselves in alignment with that, we're going to be having maybe momentary glimpses of happiness. Every now and again you get a little piece of it. 
And then after that, you just sink back into what? Sadness. But if we are delighting ourselves in the law of the Lord, we're going to be like a tree planted in, either bringing forth what again it says. Leaves also shall not wither and what again? What? What? What it says? Praise the name of the Lord. Whatsoever he doeth shall praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Can I talk with you a little bit normally, you know? Oh, so many people, all them trying, them not prospering. And sometimes they look at other people and blame them. That them no want them to prosper. Amen. That they are stopping them from. And that everything them try, people getting the way, cutting into their prosperity. What the Bible says, if you delight yourself in the law of the Lord, whatsoever. Amen. Amen. You can't say amen to that because you're not so sure. Whatsoever he doeth, God who cannot lie says it. Amen. I want to tell you further. Jesus came and says, Heaven and earth will pass before one word passes. Nobody can stop your prosperity. Hallelujah. If you are walking in line with what God says, they can try, but they can't stop it. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. No matter what they try, you don't have to watch them. You don't have to pay attention. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to fret at all. The Bible says, if I delight myself in the law of the Lord, whatsoever I do shall Shall is not a if and maybe. Shall is a condition that is stated perfectly. Amen. Whatsoever he doeth. Because you see, your delight is in what God says. And God is the one who made you. And when God's purpose is being performed in your life. You must prosper. Praise the name of the Lord. Not talking about political prosperity. Not talking about financial prosperity. Not talking about material prosperity. Amen. Talking about spiritual prosperity. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Because there's a state of affair in a man's life where he may have a little, but he's prospering. Praise the name of the Lord. And there's a state in a man's life that he has a whole lot and he's in misery. Amen. Amen. And what I want for you and for me is that we prosper spiritually. Praise the name of the Lord. That we come in line with God's word and will so much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I tell you sometimes I've appeared the spirit of God coming with some something that no bad mind can stop you. <laughs> Amen. No matter who have bad mind. Because you are in line with God's word. God's word. God's instruction. Bad mind cannot stop you. Covetousness cannot stop you. 
no evil working or weapon formed against you will prosper every tongue that rise up in judgment against you hallelujah will be condemned for it is the heritage praise the name of the Lord praise his name praise his name praise his holy name glory to God glory glory to his name glory to his name praise the name of the Lord looking good even though people feel and wish and pray you will be dying your leaves not withering all the bad they're doing bad mind and bad work and bad words and whatever that they are saying against you you still look good praise the name of the Lord hallelujah glory to the name of the Lord because you are not walking in ungodly counsel you are not sitting in the seat of scornful or you don't join with mockers of things that are good because sometimes that is how ungodly people behave anything that is good they mock it because it shows them up hey i wonder if you're understanding what i'm saying amen and so you're trying to live good and all that is that there is nothing good to say about you amen oh help me now jesus praise the name of the lord praise the name of the lord and so today what i want you to know there's a pathway to prosperity it is found in God's word praise the name of the Lord and it is about not just you see we have made the law such a bad word now once you come up about the law we cringe and we don't want to be called people who just following the law but the law of the Lord is the instructions from God and you tell me why you do not want to follow God's instruction God's instructions are godly instructions. And instructions we are rejecting God's instructions for are likely to be ungodly instructions. So when you reject God's godly instructions, chances are you're going to take on some ungodly instructions because the way we are, we have to believe something. Amen? And some of us don't believe what God says. Because if we did believe it, we would do something about it. We doubt it. Amen? So let me wrap up quickly here now. Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Praise the name of the Lord. So the Bible tells us that there's a pathway to prosperity here. Amen? And it is prosper when you're going out. Prosper when? Prosper when you're rising up. Prosper when you? Praise the name of the Lord. Whatsoever you're doing. And people wonder, how is it that you are getting by? And how is it that you're doing so well? And how is it you're not wasting away? <laughs> Amen. Amen. They don't understand how is it. Amen. That you are not wasting away and look mash up, pop down, whatever it is. They're wondering. But your interest is in the instructions of God. Praise the name of the Lord. And you are spending time when the temptation comes. And when the evil rise up in your heart, you are musing on God's word. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. And by that, you are getting some help. 
to deal with the issues and challenges of life. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So let's wrap this up. Praise God. Amen. And so we should notice in this theme where the prosperity comes in. It comes in afterwards. Amen. Some of us have an, a, a kind of expectation that if we see the thing, then we work towards it. Amen. A lot of people are not interested in working at the thing before in order to get the result. Are you with me? So if they are told, well, you know, you will prosper if you sow a hefty seed. Then they see the multiplication of what they are going to do as the basis on which they are doing. And so when the expectations don't come, they have a problem. Amen. Let me say this to you. You know, there are so many people, you see, that they get so taken up into this prosperity thing that they put in so much and expect a hundredfold multiplication or a fiftyfold multiplication. And when that don't come, they have a problem. You know, you know that? Yeah? A lot of people, you know, because they're putting the cart before hearts. Delight yourself in the Lord. Whatever you do will prosper. No, no, understand that it is God who is going to cause you to prosper. And let me also point this out. God's ways are higher and different from our ways. And God does not see the way we see. And sometimes what we expect is going to provide us with happiness and joy turn out to being sorrow and sadness. Amen. And God would do us a favor by denying it. Come on now. You can't say amen to that? Amen. 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 Yes, that when God denies it, it's a favor in doing you. Amen. Because anyhow you had gotten it, it would run you to a wreck. And send you far from him. Amen. Amen. And we have to realize that God is not seeing it the way we are seeing it. And therefore we need to surrender and submit to him. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. And so let's go to the next verse now. And we're wrapping up quickly. The ungodly are not. So, in other words... Here is this. Don't follow the ungodly. It's coming back to the theme, you know. Don't follow the ungodly. What? Why? The ungodly are what? Like a chaff that the wind driveth away. Chaff is waste trash. Waste leaf. Dust. Amen? Now, let, let, let's, let's face it. You see waste leaves, don't you? But if wind is blowing... <laughs> what happened? After a while, they're gone with the wind. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, you see them this moment, and they are kicking up dust. And after that, what happened? They're gone. David says it elsewhere. Don't be envious of them. Right? I understand as well that the wicked are on slippery ground. Amen? Amen? The ungodly are not so. They are like chaff. So they look big and strong and they are flying and you wish you could fly but it's dust blowing them. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Verse 5. Therefore the ungodly Shall not, see the word come back, stand here now. Stand in the, the ungodly will not survive, will not do well in the judgment. Now what? Sinners in the, that is why you must not stand in the way of, because there's a righteous congregation in which the sinners have no part. 
Are you with me? You see what the scripture is saying? Yeah. That the sinners who you may be standing in the way of, they have no part in the congregation of the righteous. Verse 6. For, where is verse 6 please? For the Lord. Amen. <laughs> For what? Yes. He says, you must walk in my word. That is the way of the righteous. Walking in the law of the Lord. The instructions of the Lord. The directions of the Lord. And the Lord knows them that are his. But the way of the ungodly. In other words, it don't work out. Amen? It does not work out. Now follow the advice of the ungodly. Don't stand in the way of sinners. Don't associate with and become a part of what sinners do. And prefer to be in their company than in the congregation of the righteous. Amen? Don't do it. Amen? But delight yourself in the instructions of the Lord. Amen? Meditate on his word day and night. He'll bless you. Praise the name of the Lord. That is where happiness is, church. That is where happiness is, brothers, sisters, friends, visitors. That is where happiness is in God's word. No wonder many of us find it occasionally. And sometimes it's when we do a good deed, you know, in accordance with God's word. You feel so good. And you say, I don't know, I feel like a million dollars. Amen? And you don't have a million dollars, but you feel like it. Because you have done something that is consistent with God's purpose for your life. Amen? And it registers. It resonates in your heart. Your personality. Respond to it and say, yes, I feel like I am serving a useful purpose. And God's word says, whatever you do will prosper. That is the prosperity I am recommending for your church. Praise the name of the Lord. That is the prosperity I commend to you. A prosperity that flows out of following God's word. Delighting in his instructions. Delighting in his directions. That is the prosperity I commend to you. And I pray today, as these words have been shared with you, that the spirit of almighty God, the Holy Ghost, would have ministered those words to you in an individual and special way. And that you'll respond to God as you ought to. That indeed, you may find the path to true prosperity and finally enter into the kingdom of eternal rest. God bless you in Jesus' name. Bless the Lord. Just lift your hand and worship the Lord. What a word. What a word. You know, I feel like I could be there sitting just listening. I was just feasting upon the word. You know, the word comes home to me so powerful, so pronounced, so profound. It was, it is a wonderful word. I do trust and hope that you will receive this word from God today. It's a wonderful word, and especially in these days and this time. It's a word for the season. Bless the name of the Lord. We will sing this wonderful song, M374. Is your hall on the halter?
Let me invite you to stand everywhere as we sing. Praise team, please come forward. Bless the name of the Lord. You have longed for a sweet peace and for faith to increase and have earnestly, fervently prayed. But you cannot have rest or be perfectly blessed until your all on the altar is laid. Walk with the Lord in the light of His Word. And of peace and contentment always. You must do His sweet will. Free from all hell on the halter, your hall must be laid.
just a moment, just a moment before we do the last stanza. The halter is now open. If you are here and you are sick, you are here and you need that strength to continue to worship God. And you are here and you feel that you are not at the place. The halter is open. Pastor will be coming after the last stanza. Two prayer requests here. Brother Len Ford requesting prayer for family member John. He's very sick. And I also have a prayer request from Sister Sergio for her mother, Naomi Smith, and Daniel Sergio not feeling well. They are requesting prayer. Wisdom and power be unto thee, now and evermore. You are the eternal God. You are the immortal, the invisible, the only wise God. Hallelujah. Ancient of days, creator of heaven and earth. Hallelujah. The Lord God Almighty, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders. Hallelujah. 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 It is to you we give the glory, O God. And it is to you we give the praise. None of it belongs to us. It is all yours. Have the glory of this moment, O oh God. 
have the glory of our lives. We want to yield our body and soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to walk with you in the light of your word and have peace and contentment all way. Hallelujah. We want you to control our body and our soul. Amen. And so we bring our all to the altar. Hallelujah. We lay everything at your feet. Everything. Everything of God. Hallelujah. You know us inside out. Oh God, the psalmist declare, you have searched me and known me. Hallelujah. Knowest my down sitting, my uprising. My thoughts are far off. There is not a word in my tongue. Lo, O oh Lord, you know it all together. I cannot hide from you. Amen. Amen. Wherever I go, you are there. Your eyes run to and fro the earth. You are seeing everything. And so now as we come, O oh God, in this moment of prayer, we open our hearts to you and say, move, Spirit of the living God. Yay, move, Spirit of the living God, Holy Ghost. Move on our hearts. Bring conviction. Hallelujah. Bring salvation. Amen. Bring healing. Oh, bring deliverance. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Supply needs according to your riches in glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For we are yielding to you everything. We are surrendering all. Take us, O oh God. Mold us. Fashion us in accordance with your word in accordance with your will we repent of our sins we confess that we have sinned against you we have sinned against one another fallen short of your glory forgive us oh God forgive us creating us a clean heart oh God Amen. Amen. Renew a right spirit in us. Cast us not away from your presence, O oh God, though we deserve it. Take not your Holy Spirit from us, O oh God. Restore unto us. Amen. The joy of your salvation and renew a right spirit. Thank you for your presence, oh God. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your power moving right now. Hallelujah. Moving by your spirit. Moving by your power. Hallelujah. Working on the heart. Yes, it is you. We know it's you. Working on our heart. Yeah, Yeah, we surrender. Yeah, Yeah, we give it up. Hallelujah. We turn to you, Lord. Hallelujah. Take us, oh God. Break us. Mold us. Fashion us. Hallelujah into what we ought to be. God, take away from us our own selfish ways. Dear Lord and Father of mankind, forgive our foolish ways. Oh God, forgive our foolish ways. The foolish ways we have pursued. Oh God, the folly we have taken pride in. Oh God, 
the advice we have taken that is ungodly, the ways we have stood in that are contrary to your word and your will. Forgive us, O oh God. Hallelujah. Give us a taste and an appetite for your instructions. An appetite, a desire for your word that we may acquire the taste. Hallelujah. And delight in your word so that we may prosper spiritually. That is our prayer. And we ask that you will grant it, O oh God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we present the requests that have been made. Various requests for healing, the deliverance, for protection, for provision, for salvation. We hold them up before you now, O oh God, and ask, omniscient God, thou who knowest all the weakness, the pain, the sin, the shame, the guilt. We offer to you now these and ask that you remove them and grant healing and deliverance and victory and joy and happiness and fruitfulness in our lives. We ask these mercies through Jesus Christ, our Lord, and those who believe say, Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forever. Bless the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Please remind it that Praise and praise power is tomorrow night. So, and we should start at seven. Bless the name of the Lord. Please stay in your seat until we exit the platform. I just want to say, on behalf of our pastor, Pastor Harley, praise team, mutation, technical team. It was pleasure serving you. May the Lord continue to bless you as you worship him in spirit and in truth. Please take the stage, Lord, and have your way. I'm just a vessel and nothing more. And when you're done, please take the glory. I'm satisfied just to see you glorified. Please take the stage, Lord, and have your way. I'm just a vessel, nothing more. And when you're done, Satisfied just to see you glorified. One more time. Say, take the stage, Lord, and have your way. I'm just a vessel and nothing more. And when you're done. Satisfied just to see you glorified. So take the stage, Lord. Have your way. Have your way. I'm just a vessel. I'm just a vessel. And nothing more. And nothing more. And when you're done. 